Hello and welcome to Dialogue. As Chinese society continues to develop, new careers are also developing right alongside it for today's younger generations. What are some of these new careers? Are they stable? Do they have a future? And how can young people navigate through the untested waters of these new industries? I'm joined today by three young guests who have been working in these new industries to give us a better understanding of what some of these careers are all about. They are Pui Xing, an avid player of escape room games, and now a scriptwriter of murder mystery role-playing games, which are currently all the rage here in China. And Billy Bai, a ski travel vlogger. Malik Naibi, a social media influencer. I'm also joined by Professor Li Jingzhao at Beijing Foreign Studies University. That is our topic. I'm Dong Shi. I am so excited to have all of you on today because some of you have some of the most coveted jobs with China's younger generation, and uh, some of what you do is so new we don't fully understand it. And that's right, Yixing. I'm talking about you. So why don't we get started with you here?、Uh, tell tell us how you got into writing for murder mystery tabletop games, and、uh, is there good money to be made? Actually, I I didn't take、uh, I didn't take the、uh, script writer for murder mystery as a lifelong career. I just want to give it a try because. After all those games I played and all those detective stories I read, because I think for a lot of people they are facing this same issue too. Should I get into this and make this permanent? Is there sustainability in what I do, or should I treat this as a temporary gig? That's a good start. Billy, I want to come to you now. I tracked down your account on social media, and your videos are exquisite. And by exquisite, I mean. When you ski down that beautiful mountain in Canada, you'd have to have someone to ski behind you and film you skiing down that slope.、Um, you obviously have help making these videos, but across the spectrum, other travel vloggers, a lot of them have made it with just a one-man operation,、uh, with you know simple equipment like、uh, maybe just a cell phone. So when you look at the contents produced by travel vloggers today. What contents do you think are more likely to go viral? Well, I think like、uh, indeed a smartphone GoPro now can make you a vlogger, but I would say like beside the camera, I think topic are, are quite the most important part. I mean,、uh, some 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 video you see me like like ski down from the slope is really like excited, like like someone like follow you by the camera, like make the 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 camera the video more vivid. But actually, I think find a good topic and dig it well can make your your video special and fun. I mean, it's, don't think too much about the the camera editing skills. I think、uh, I just want to like just make some like unique topics more important to to the the nowadays, especially、mm. nowadays. A lot of the the short video platform like TikTok. I think the trend is very important. Malik, I want to come to you now. We've introduced you as a social media influencer. Is that title maybe too vague for you? How would you describe what you do and、uh, who you are? Yeah, thank you for、uh, first of all. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's, it's it's an interesting question. I don't really see social media influencer as a as a as an occupation. I see I see that more as a, more of a identity. It's something that. That I will have for I think a really long period of time, but at the same time I could have a lot of other occupation. I could be a entrepreneur and a social media influencer. I could be a restaurant owner, but at the same time a social media influencer. So for me, it's a、uh, it's just part of my lifestyle and part of my、uh, personal identity. And and my work is basically showing、um, uh, my opinion or my experience.、Um, Uh, on things, and and so I have a lot of、um, people who are influenced by my ideas、uh, and like my my attitude towards life, and also、uh, my ideas towards certain issue or objects. So、uh, it's, it's it's a really interesting um, um, title or or occupation or or, or 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 a personality to have. But is it a job for you, or is it something on the side that you do just for the fun, just for、um, you know your passion? 
Well, honestly, I couldn't find a job that pays higher than what I do as a social media influencer. So in terms of that, I, I would definitely see it as a, a job for sure, because it generates um, uh, it generates profit. At the same time, it takes uh, up a good portion of my time. And uh, and also it's, it's basically, I would say I spend half of my time creating content. So I, I would say it's a job, but um, for a lot of people, job is 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 something that it, it, like you can only have one job right at a time. But for a social media influencer, you can have multiple at a time. So like, basically, it's a part time job for me. I think that's the correct way to describe it. All right, Professor Lee, we've met all of our guests who have unconventional, new, exciting jobs that are admired by a lot of China's young people. When you listen to them talk about their jobs. Um, in your hearts, have you been nodding your head, thinking, good for you, way to go, get it? Or have you been shaking your head a little bit, thinking, no, guys, this is not a career, this is just a temporary gig? Uh, well, I think uh, what Malik has shared with us uh, can indicate a, a new challenge for uh, scholars of labor and work. Uh, because now uh, we see this uh, blurring boundary of career, occupation, or job, or identity. So it's a mixture of um, multi uh, multiple uh, dimensions. And uh, I think that all, all these uh, guests, they belong to the new generation. We call them the digital generation. Uh, and this, in human history, this generation is the first and only generation who has a more uh, knowledge and technical skills than the earlier generations. So I think uh, there is a great potential for some of these part-time jobs or identity to turn into lifelong careers, especially those uh, uh, posts, those uh, occupations or temporal identities that are associated with new technology, with uh, green industry, and with aging industry. So above all, I think uh, the jobs associated with online uh, media and also with consumption-based uh, services have a great potential in turning into new careers. <laughs> Uh, Yixing, I know you said that writing for murder mystery games is just a temporary job for you. Uh, but if someone comes up to you and say, you know, I like playing these games, I want to get into writing for them, uh, what type of people do you think will be a right fit for this job? First of all, you, you have to understand what a uh, murder mystery is, and you've read a lot of stories. Uh, not only the detective story. If you're gonna be a script writer in the field of murder mystery, so you're gonna know how to create a story that grab uh, people's attention and uh, some like uh, game mechanism that how you uh, can bring players together to cooperate and compete with each other. So it's more like a game designer rather mm. than the traditional script writer. Mm. Yeah. Billy, what about you? What is vlogging for you now? Is it something that you can commit 100% to? Or out of financial considerations, you're going to have to uh, maybe juggle multiple things at a time? Well, I think like before I decide to become a full-time like vlogger, I, mm. it takes me like five years to work in the travel industry. So I already have like a, a pretty stable job. Like I, I do tailor-made travel and design some like travel destination journey like for the high-end people. And then I decide to, to move on to, to become a full-time vlogger. And I, so far I think it's already become like, like just one job for me. I already have like pretty good income from, from the advertisement or the other video I make, yeah. like co cooperation with the brand. So I, so far it can support my travel and skiing expense. So now I don't, don't have other like jobs to, to support this. So, but it takes times to, it takes me like 
five to ten years to finally come to this step. I think like for for people who want to become like to have a one stable jobs like like these kind of new careers like support their whole life. I mean, it t it could be takes quite a long time to finally to this step. But if you don't already have enough in income, I think like if you have like some major job like just do like support your hobby okay. like as a as a like part time job, I think is pretty good. Uh, Professor Lee, as you've heard, mm -hmm. all of our other guests have been quite careful, I should say, not reckless, in venturing into this newer, more unconventional job that they have right now. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you think stability is an issue, is a, a factor uh, in their decision-making mm -hmm. process? As we can see from all of our three uh, practitioners of new careers or new occupations, um, they did not venture into this uh, new career out of a spur of a moment. It was years of accumulation. So uh, whatever new industry or new occupation you are getting into, you have to invest yourself. So we can see obviously that they have uh, economic capital, meaning they uh, are available, they are, are, they are um, ready or they are available with a, a kind of a leading sum of money and also they have uh, this uh, social capital because they already know the circle or they know associated careers, for instance acting, uh, for instance travel industry. So apart from economic capital and social capital, they definitely they have invested a lot in the cultural capital. So if you have these three capitals ready, then you can think about stepping into the new uh, career for a venture. You're watching Dialogue. We're going to take a short break. Welcome back to Dialogue. Uh, Malik, we were talking about it was a good idea to maybe have a plan B on the side if uh, what you're trying doesn't work out. I, I know you wanted to add on to that point. Yeah, I think my previous answer was a little, it sounded a little too conservative. I actually advocate uh, most young people to definitely go and try out uh, the social media industry or streaming industry. Um, and I want to clarify that the, being a social media influencer and a streamer isn't the only job that's available in this industry. This is a really rewarding industry. At the same time, it's developing really fast and it needs a lot of people who like, has ambition and and also uh, you know like you don't really need an experience you don't really need a degree to be in this industry for example you need like there there are jobs like operations there are jobs like um, live stream uh, operator and and SOE managers right and and, and a lot of jobs like that and also it's the, the the pay is much higher than a lot of other like common jobs like accountant or or, or some of the uh, more formal jobs. That You're talking about, about them doing this job full time, not being an yes. influencer, maybe, but doing this job full time. You think that is a rewarding profession, also? Absolutely, absolutely. So, like, I, I really advocate young people to look into this, in this industry. It's really rewarding, and there are a lot of full time opportunity. And also, those skill set could be transferred into some of the like formal, like marketing industry uh, or like advertisement industry. So, don't worry if you, if you want to go try it out. When That's you say you don't need experience, um, you don't need expertise, what do they need if this is an area, this is a sector that they, mm -hmm. they, they want to try? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to explain why, because this industry has only, you know, been existed for four or five years now. So it's hard to find a person with 10 years of experience in this industry. So companies, when they recruit, they tend to hire uh, people with, first of all, ambition and also really sensitive about information. and new trend if you're the person you're, you're online all the time you know about all the trends and you know what young people want and like this might be a good job for you and also if you're creative that's a plus all right uh, billy let me come back to you i mean um we talked about stability i also want to talk a little bit about sustainability um, are you worried about the uh, vlogging as a trend go out of fashion in the future? Do you think this is something 
that has sustainability in it, what you do, the interests of your followers, will that sustain in the long term, Billy? I mean, uh, of course, like um, what I'm doing is trying to, I mean, before the pandemic, I'm trying to um, snowboarding or skiing all over the world. So try to see different countries, different resort, different continent even. So I'm trying to do different kind of skiing way. So like the leisure way or like hardcore way, like we hiking or we just like okay. cruise okay. down in the resort. So I'm trying to, to create different content. So like, because the followers actually, they have different habits or different uh, topic they want to see. So I'm trying to develop myself as a, I mean, like more suitable for the public. So I'm trying to, to try different things, but same thing. I'm, I'm kind of worried about like, for example, like d during the pandemic, like we couldn't travel. So for example, this season, I'm trying to, to see more the resort in China and especially now is the, the winter Olympic time. So I'm trying to find out what is more like suitable for this season. So for example, like some content related to winter Olympics or some like content that relate to the Chinese that like, resort travel like information. So it's more uh, important for me at this moment. So I'm trying to to stay with the the trend because like that's why what we should do as an influencer or as a streamer, as a blogger, blogger, all the important things is very, as the Mali said, very sensitive to information. You have to know nowadays what people are watching, what they want to know. So they're going to be the, the topic you should be like build. Uh, Professor Lee, let's talk about stability versus uh, sustainability, because these newer jobs that our guests have, um, in terms of stability, which is a very popular concept in Chinese thinking, we all want stable jobs. In terms of stability, they don't hand you a paycheck at the end of the month. Um, the more important issue is about sustainability. Malik said this mm -hmm. sector that he strongly advised uh, other people to try in has only existed four or five years. Who knows mm -hmm. how long it can survive, how long the vibe is there, how long the momentum is there. What would you say to young people that have a desire mm -hmm. to try some of these newer jobs? How, how mm -hmm. much weight should they give to the sustainability of their new career? Well, there are two different ways you can uh, think about the sustainability. First of all, is the sustain sustainability of the career as a new type of occupation itself. Is it listed? Is it recognized by uh, the uh, China China's uh, classification of occupation system? Uh, if it's not, and if it's, if it's uh, popular and over 5,000 people engaging in this career, to assure sustainability, you can uh, file an application to uh, ask the government agencies to invest to find out the future of this uh, new job or new career and get it uh, officially recognized or endorsed. The second way of sustainability is, uh, like for instance, in social media, uh, the bloggers or the influencers as a job will last uh, for a significant period of time. But in this uh, new social media, there is a very high turnover of uh, followers' attentions. So I think in this aspect, uh, um, the popular uh, bloggers or the popular influencers need the new career of a career planner or financial consultant to sit down and to discuss um, your possible financial safety network and your uh, future um, future uh, situation if you want to stay in the same career. So at social level and at personal level. Hmm. Malik, I just want to press you on that advice you give to young people. If they're interested in the sector, they should give it a try. But we know every job change comes with risks. And the risks here, um, if, they, if they want a streaming job, you know, on camera or 
off camera is that if it doesn't work out over a certain period of time, they might not necessarily have the expertise or the experience for them to move back to a more uh, conventional job. Uh, how should they prepare for those possibilities, for the risks that come with moving into a newer sector, a newer profession that maybe has not been tested and tried over time? Uh, first of all, my opinion is as long as you're working in the public sector, the private sector, that there's no job seen as a stable job. Look at programmers; mm. they were seen as a stable job, but mm. you know a lot of them get kicked out when they're 35 in the in the, in the big internet com in, internet companies. So first of all, I would say if you're still in college or if you're fresh out of college, do internships, right? Um, you do part do it part time. Use like give yourself a three months to six six months to try it out. A final opportunity to to have that insight, and also social media is something that you can start on your own. You don't even you don't really have to join a company or necessarily get a job to do it. So you can you can still get a conventional job, but at the same time, um, you know it's, you you lose maybe some of your sleeves, but uh, you start you know building up your accounts or your your live stream group. Um, try it out first. So uh, we call it minimal viable product uh, you can start up. So yeah, like find a way to test it. Um, see if it's for you. Yeah. Uh, Yixing, something tells me you are a free spirit and a risk taker. What is your take on the risks, um, on the possibility for failure when it comes to trying out some of those more unconventional jobs? Uh, you know, when, when I was still uh, an investor in venture capital, my boss once told me that uh, he never thought of he would become an investor uh, when he was younger so uh, we uh, we always try to predict the future but the but but the truth is the futures cannot be predicted so those uh, uh, in the uh, career you think would be uh, stable may not be that stable so so for me I just think the, the most important moment is right now i just think more of of the, the present time and to, to grab every opportunity I'm, i i i can so that's what i think mm. you are seizing the moment billy what about you uh, of course like it takes me sometimes to calculate about uh, the risk of the failure but i mean for me it's easy because by the time like doing the ski content or like winter sport content in China was really a really small people to doing that. So I already by the time because like during the time when I work in the travel industry I already like start to 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 create or generate content. So by the time I already have some followers. So uh, I already also get some like income. So like easy for me to calculate the number and for me I think like like even I take like six months or one year like a gap year I can be like I can take that risk so I mean all this comes to number but if that thing doesn't work out I can always come back to the industry so because for me I have some strengths my expertise like in the in the travel industry so I, I, I believe I can always find a like a formal or like I don't know like a, a job so if I if I mm. want but if I move to like a full time blogger or vlogger on the winter sport I mean I can see a new career like past that no one like willing to do. So for me it's like like a brand new like past. So I mean I, I have to take the risk and but when when you take the risk you can also find there's a huge opportunity because like not so many people want to take the risk to to step on that so that means a big opportunity mm. Uh, Professor Lee, let's talk about this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Today's young people are obviously more willing to take risks, but can they really afford it? This recent Gallup report on the millennials reveals that 21% of millennials say they've changed jobs within uh, past years, which is more than three times the number of non-millennials who report the same. People are obviously more mobile. Um, they're acting on a whim sometimes, mm -hmm. but how do you think they should 
uh, protect themselves from unnecessary risks, risks that are associated uh, with newer professions, newer sectors? Mm. Yeah, I think now we have a higher percentage of young people being more mob mobile in seeking employment and in transforming their jobs is because there are a lot of new jobs appearing. So this is a very special moment uh, of uh, fast development of uh, smart technology and consumer society. So they are able to find new jobs. So to a certain extent, they have privilege. That's why they are able to be mobile. On the other hand, uh, I think, uh, yeah, you are right. They should not uh, be, they should be more prepared. So they should at least uh, uh, do their own risk analysis of pros and cons of uh, stepping away from uh, available employment and venturing into new new fields and i want to emphasize social social support or the support of the social network of their maybe significant others or in uh, or generalized others close to them so i want to ask the uh, three successful cases here how much uh, family support or so social support they tapped into uh, at their beginning of their of their online careers or of their um, uh, script the writing industry. So how much family support or social network support? Can we do that, Bali? Can we indulge uh, Professor Lee's question? Did you have extra Absolutely. support and help when you started out? Uh, yes, I think I'm a, I'm a really lucky case. Uh, my, my first ever video got me hundreds of followers overnight. So uh, for me, it was like I had a good start and also a good financial return on that. So my family uh, was, they, they, they're really simple when it comes to making decisions. Uh, if you can if you can live on your own, uh, then it's the right decision. So uh, I did have a lot of support uh, from the family, but mm. I do know people need to like really have to make a peace with their with their family to, to, to pursue a career in this in mm. social media. Um, I know it's not for everybody and uh, we all have different situations in family. Mm. Billy, what about you? I think like uh, support from family is very important to me because uh, I learned snowboarding like in France when I studied there. So by that time, my my family, my my parents, they know that's the kind of the thing I love and want to devote to the, my whole life to doing it. So when the first time I told them I want to become a, a full time like blogger on winter sport, they say, okay, if this is the thing you you want to do, like you love to do it, like. I, they saying like you have to, like to, to follow your heart. I think it's very important. And also like I, I tell them the truth. Like if I like like to, to analyze the the strengths, weakness, like potential opportunity, they think it's pretty good because by that time, China already been having the 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 hold for the 2022 Winter Olympic. Everyone can see they're gonna be a ski boom in China. So everyone can see it's a good good thing in the future. So. I'm, I'm pretty lucky to get my, my parents' support. I think it's very important for me. Last but not least, Yixing, your take on family and outside help? Uh, when, when my parents find that I, I can make a living and maybe gain more uh, than the previous job, they suggest me to take on. They, they say, uh, OK, that's fine. So. so uh, they finally uh, accept the fact that I can take care, I can take good care of myself. All right, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. As someone who is holding down a very conventional job in television, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today. And if we're being honest, I've been tempted to maybe try some of what you do, guys. Thank you so much for your time, analysis, and expertise. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching Dialogue today. I'm Dong Shi.